Here we go again. No, no, not again. You've been fooled. How long have we been doing this? Once more, unto the world. Again, again, until we're both dead. Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, Movie Reviews The Connection in Mind. The month of March is going to see a number of great movies come out, such as Kong Skull Island, Life, and the first great film to come out uh, this month, Logan. Now, Logan is the ninth portrayal of the, the character of Wolverine by Hugh Jackman, and he's been portraying this character since the first X-Men movie came out 17 years ago. This movie's being marketed as his essentially swan song as he's hanging up the claws for the last time, and boy, did he go out with a splash. Now, this movie will contain certain spoilers of the film Logan, as well as a couple other films. There'll be a full list in the description below. If you haven't seen Logan yet, or any of the movies listed below, and want to wait until you have, stop the video at this point and come back later. But with these things in mind though, let's begin. So Logan is the ninth film in the X-Men franchise to star Wolverine and Hugh Jackman's portrayal of that character. The, this movie is set in the late 2040s and it takes place after the events of X-Men Days of Future Past. By this point, mutant kind is pretty much extinct. There are very few mutants left. Now, Logan is an old, beat-up man. His, uh, his healing powers are fading. He can't heal the same way. He has, has scars all over his body, and it pains him to even use his claws. And somehow, trouble keeps finding him while he's just trying to keep a low profile, and he's taking care of the very old and mentally unstable Professor X, who is in his 90s at this point, and his mind's not right, is not, not quite right anymore. And this is a problem because what happens when an old man, who, who is probably suffering from Alzheimer's at this point, has the most powerful and dangerous mind on the planet? So the authorities are after him, trying to find him, and Logan is stuck trying to help him out. And while, he, uh, while he's in this situation, he comes across the girl of Laura, a young girl who is essentially thrust upon him, seeking his help. And the authorities are chasing this girl. We don't know why at, uh, at first, but Logan is thrust into this encounter, and he has to take care for this little girl, who, as we see, is not quite so defenseless as uh, she might seem. And, in fact, she is referred to uh, in this film as X-23. And if you know from the comics, X-23 is the female clone of Wolverine. And she also has an adamantium skeleton with uh, adamantium claws and a fast healing ability. So, but uh, she suffers from being raised in an isolated environment by la as essentially a lab subject. So her social skills are way uh, out of whack. And so she got, uh, we get to see Logan essentially teach her how to cope with the same kind of problems that, she, that he did, trying to tame his animal instincts. But of course, in the, throughout the course of this film, there are certainly moments where Logan has to become the Wolverine, the animal, once more. And because this is an R-rated movie, Wow, does that go and does that get violent and gory very fast? And essentially, that's really why uh, this movie is R rated to show that, yes, uh, Logan is an old beat up man, and when he, got, he turns loose, he goes brutal and he, they, he does not pull any punches. There are some, some of the, several elements of this film that you have seen before in other films, and while watching it, you'll notice certain parallels with it. A couple of, a couple of them come to mind. We'll start with the obvious ones and go from there. First, I would say that this film has a very strong resemblance to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Both of these films involve um, the main hero is an old grizzled character who has seen some stuff and he, is, he can hold his own in a fight, but he lives in a world where his old world no longer exists and he's forced to become the hero, even, uh, become a hero again, even though he doesn't really want to be a hero. And by film's end, you, uh, Mad Max is actually thrust into a situation where 
he has to care for a bunch of kids and he has to get uh, get these kids to safety and these kids eventually have uh, he the uh, Mad Max sacrifices himself essentially he doesn't die but he essentially stays behind so that these kids can get on a plane and leave this area and go to a place where they think is safer and away from Barter Town, which is full of thugs. Now, this is very similar to Logan in that Logan has to care for Laura slash X-23, and um, her caretaker sought Logan out because she wanted her, um, her to get X-23 slash Laura to Eden, which is a place in North Dakota where the... These other children are supposed to uh, find shelter, and they uh, and then they can cross the Canadian border to safety. And then Logan is forced to not only care for Laura along the way, but he ends up sacrificing himself to make sure these kill these kids can get to across the border into safety. Uh, another uh, similarity that this film shares, I would say, is um, along the lines of the born supremacy. Now, if you haven't seen The Bourne Supremacy, it's very similar because um, the character of Jason Bourne in Supremacy, it's the second of the Bourne films, we have already established that Jason Bourne is part of a uh, CIA weapons program where essentially Jason Bourne is turned, in, turned into the super badass assassin and he's, try, and he's part of now a defunct program and now Jason Bourne is living off the land somewhere in India, and he's trying to make a life for himself. And outside forces come in and essentially rip that the world away from him and kill his uh, his friend. And now uh, Jason Bourne is once again unleashed onto these forces. And it's very similar to Logan because Logan is a character who is essentially trying to keep a very low profile. He is a very dangerous weapon. He's a, he is a part of the def- he was a product of the defunct Weapon X program and the outside forces of those the forces they I believe they're called Reavers in this film and they come and they're in pursuit of X23 and now Logan's uh, plan to die in peace is shattered and he's forced back into the fray so to speak, and now he is a weapon, again, turned, uh, turned loose on these soldiers. Now, the second act of this film essentially turns into a road trip movie in which Wolverine, uh, Tr- Professor X, and Laura are all in this car, and they're, ha- they're tra- trekking from the southern border, like around El Paso area, to North Dakota, and they're trying. it's basically a road trip. The- these three people heading out on the road... Uh, to get to this place in North Dakota. And there's some similarities here, very briefly, with uh, the movie Tomorrowland from 2015, in which the young girl um, uh, seeks out an older character, and they end up going on a central road trip to find answers uh, to their problems as well. So there's the, then there's also this father sort of pseudo father daughter dynamic in Tomorrowland in which the young girl bonds with in this case George Clooney's older character and there there's that same sort of parallel between um, Logan and Laura although of course as we know um, Laura is for all intents and purposes Logan's daughter and they do end up having a father daughter relationship. And finally, while it's very tenuous, it's um, this movie's uh, overall arc of the Logan slash Laura X-23 uh, character development by film's end somewhat mirrors that of uh, Star War- the first Star Wars in that um, this movie ends with Logan uh, sacrificing himself. He dies. Of course, we don't know if he's dead for sure, but for, uh, for the purposes of this film, we can safely assume that Logan did die in the final battle, and Laura slash X-23 is his spiritual successor to the mantle of the Wolverine, and the movie ends with uh, Laura becoming a stronger warrior, having these gifts, and essentially becoming sort of a leader, and, uh, leading this group to, uh, across the border. And this is kind of similar to Star Wars, in which... Um, Luke Skywalker seeks out Obi-Wan Kenobi 
and he discovers his blood relation with a powerful um, powerful order of warriors in case in this case the Jedi and they and then by film's end Obi-Wan Kenobi dies as his mentor slash father figure and now Luke has to take up the mantle of uh, being becoming a Jedi in the by the end of Star Wars and of course Empire and Return of the Jedi so that's a very tenuous connection, but in overall character development, I would say that's another fair similarity. Of course, that's very common film and liter- literary trope as well. Those are my connections with uh, Logan. You've definitely seen elements of the Born Supremacy and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome in Logan, but there's also elements of Tomorrowland's road trip elements in Logan, as well as the overall character arc of uh, Obi Wan and uh, Obi Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker from Star Wars in this film. Now, does that mean any of this means that Logan's a bad film? Absolutely not. Do not let these connections make you not see this film. If there are any negatives to this film, I would say that there are certain el- times in this film where the movie kind of drags, and there's a certain scene where a whole lot of exposition is dumped on Logan and Professor X in order to catch us up on the plot, and it's presented in a way that seems kind of like cheating, and it's like, how did they do that? But we understand it and move on. Also, there are a couple of uh, side character deaths that, while the movie intends of, uh, tends these deaths to be somewhat powerful and meaningful to the, us, the audience, I, don't, uh, I personally didn't feel like that came off very well. I felt it's like, yeah, all right, I'm bummed that they died, but it's not necessarily like a gut punch, you know what I mean? So those are the only negatives, I would say. Overall, I would say this film is a fantastic film that definitely needed the R rating because uh, in order to show the brutality of Wolverine as his feral form, uh, feral fighting uh, posture, and to see, uh, delve deep into these uh, these character motivations, how... Logan and Professor X are getting along in their old age and how they're dealing with world events and the events in their lives. And it's a very, very moving film. It is a very emotional film. And I would say uh, it, pulled, it pulls its emotional punches very well. And I would say definitely go see this film. There you go. There's my review for Logan. I'm glad you watched this. I, if you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. And if you like this, please like and subscribe and follow me on social media, whatever. I ha- uh, the links will be full follow. And yeah, if you, uh, lo- go definitely see Logan. But of course, just remember, there's nothing new under the sun. And yes, you have seen it before. So until next time, thank you for watching.